إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away only after he completely propagated the complete revelation from his Lord without the slightest deficiency. Allah Ta'ala bears witness to this. The believers in Islam, the believers in the oneness of Allah Ta'ala likewise bear witness to this. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 3, Allah Ta'ala says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا This day I have perfected your religion for you, have completed my favor upon you, and I have chosen Islam to be your way of life. Your deen. Muhammad ibn Idris, Muhammad ibn Ismail al Bukhari, and Muslim ibn Hijaj narrated the narration on the authority of Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of believers, Aisha bint Abi Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that she said to Masaruk, rahimahullahu ta'ala, if anyone says to you, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept secret anything revealed to him by his Lord, know that he has lied. L-I-E-D, lied. All the Muslims upon the final hajj, when they were asked by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be questioned, O Muslims, about me. So what will you say? They said, we bear witness that you have fully conveyed the revelation from your Lord, have done your duty, have sincerely advised your ummah, your nation, and have fulfilled that which is upon you. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his forefinger towards the sky, thus towards the people, and hence, he said, Oh Allah, bear witness. Oh Allah, bear witness. Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his sunan, with a sahih chain, mentioned that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have kept nothing that Allah ta'ala has ordered you to do, except I have ordered you to do it. And I have kept nothing that Allah Ta'ala forbid you to do, forbade you, except that I have forbade you from it. One thing that scholars in Islam, all the scholars differ not about, is that Islam is established upon two magnificent and great fundamental principles. One, worshipping Allah Ta'ala alone. 
with absolute sincerity to taking and following unconditionally the best example, the best teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the pure, clean deen of Islam, has only one teaching. There is only one true Islam. There is no such thing as different versions of Islam. The true Islam is only one which is based or it lies underneath the Quran, the shade of the Quran, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understandings of our beloved companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. As illustrated most eloquently in an authentic narration on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anh that one day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to them and drew on the sand a straight line, a straight line. Thus he said, this is the path of Allah ta'ala. This is the path to salvation. At the end of it is paradise. The path that Allah ta'ala wants you to be on. Clear, pure, excellent, perfect path. Then he drew lines on the right and lines on the left to this one here, to the straight line, and said, These are the earth, the deviated paths. And on the top of each one, there is a devil, a shaitan, calling people to this path, away, trying to destroy them, divert them from the straight path. Come to me, he says. Path of innovation, path of wickedness, mischief, evil, corruption, destruction, path of kufr, shirk, and so forth. Every single path that diverts on the side of this straight path, the path of paradise, is a shaitan. Come, I invite you to destruction. I invite you to hellfire. And thus... Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after drawing this example for us, for this nation, Ummut Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recited a beautiful, glorious verse, translated, Indeed, this is my path. Wa anna hadha sirati mustaqima straight. Fattabi'u, follow it and do not follow the paths that divert on its side. Otherwise, it would mislead you to evil from the correct path. It clearly shows that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the most eloquent, elaborated, clarified, very explicitly and manifestly, that the only path is his path. Deviation from this is destruction is a non-acceptable chain of Islam. And as scholars have placed it in the most beautiful way, it is an innovation. Every step into the path on the side is an innovation and evil. We as Muslims, dear brothers and sisters, are obligated to consider, to regard the Quran and the Sunnah as our yard stick of excellence, we must refrain from interfering into the matters concerning Islamic law by applying our intellect. In better words, we must slake the thirst of our soul and only resort to these two beautiful, perfect affluence. Deviation from this is indeed destruction unfortunately today it is sad to say that many people have adopted ways ways that contradict the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that contradict this beautiful path of salvation some have pursued the traditions cherished by their forefathers, 
others by their so-called infallible imams or teachers. Wallahi, they have done nothing but enter, stepped in the shoes of our Prophet wasallam and changed the deen that was established through him by Allah Ta'ala. They have done nothing but dismantle this beautiful deen piece by piece, leaving the hearts and minds of men corrupted, polluted, unable to recognize the truth from falsehood. These people of innovation is whom we are speaking about. They are like a cancer. Cancer eats slowly the body within. And likewise, innovations slowly eats the deen of Islam from within, destroying the Sunnah, destroying the Muslims. This is the path of innovation. This path we have been commanded to stay away from. The Almighty Lord warned us about this. But out there, there seems to be confusion. Many Muslims do not know the definition of innovation. There seems to be doubtfulness, confusion about what is actually sunnah and what is actually bid'ah. We will briefly elaborate on this definition. Innovation linguistically means something that is new. Something that is new, like a novelty, an introduced thing, an invention. For example, spoon, a fork. To eat with these is an innovation. Driving a car is an innovation. Flying in an airplane, innovation. But is this acceptable? Yes, it is acceptable. Because the person that commits such acts is not doing it to get close to Allah Ta'ala. This is not the innovation that we are referring to. We are referring to every act. This is the innovation that is haram. Every act that is performed as a way to get closer to Allah Ta'ala or to, be, to seek Allah's pleasure that was not taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa nor acted upon, nor approved of. This is the innovation that we are referring to. And this is of two types. Listen carefully. The first type, a new innovation. For example, an innovation has no base in Islam. Such a person who says or claims that I am going to invent a new prayer today. So he lies on the ground. He lies on the ground and says, this is a new prayer in Islam. So he lies on the ground, Allahu Akbar, with his leg up high and says, this is an added prayer to the five prayers. And thus you must perform this every day for your prayers to all be acceptable. This is something new. This is ultimate destruction, evil and corruption. As the second type of innovation, which is haram as well. Any action... When something is added to an action in Islam that has a base in Sharia. Ah. Example, dhikr after the congregational prayer, the, pre the prescribed prayer. We all know that Allah Ta'ala taught us uh, on the Prophet Sallallahu that there is a dhikr after every prescribed prayer taught by him Sallallahu and he taught us the best way to do this, did he not? Did he not teach us how to do dhikr? Subhanallah, independently, on your own, not collectively. He taught us the best way of doing it. Now you might get some people who comes, all right then. If this is acceptable, then there shouldn't be a problem by us getting together collectively and doing dhikr in unison, in a state of unity. For example, say Allah, Allah, say Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Was this taught by Muhammad 